What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Killer Keemstar, and I'm here with... Only use me, Blade. <laughs> this is the Bad Kid Cast, the audio cast that you listen to. While you game. We're available on iTunes, Android, and I don't know. I don't have to say anything now. Cool. I'm out of that. <laughs> I'm out of that loop. We're available on iTunes and Android, guys. Um, here's the thing. There's always this confusion. Where where am I going to get the Bad Kid cast? Um, it, we're on Spreaker, right? It, if you have a computer and you want to listen to us on a computer, right, you can go to Spreaker.com, find the show there. Um, there's a Spreaker app for Android users. Uh, a lot of people say that they don't like the Spreaker app. And can I also say another way? I know this sounds kind of cheesy, but another way is uh, Keem and I are both extremely active on Twitter. Like, we both, like, live on Twitter. And so if you ever really want to get a hold of me, I think that's the best way. If you yeah. want to get a hold of Keem, that's the best way. And if you go to our feeds, depending on how often we do this podcast, just scroll down a little bit and you'll find the latest podcast. Yeah, you, you can't miss it. Um, and then uh, for iTunes, he, here's the confusion on iTunes. i got to explain this for people that don't know. If you have an iPhone and you're like, you know what? I looked on iPhone or iTunes and I couldn't find you guys. You have to download the podcast app. It's a purple circle. It's actually iTunes, but it's a different app. It's called Podcast. Yeah. So uh, make sure you do that. It's been a busy, crazy week. It has. It it's has. it's been insane for me. Um, my new channel is up and running, close to nine thousand subscribers. Coming in hot coming in hot it's not really my channel i shouldn't call it my channel because i don't own it right. i don't possess it and i don't access it if that channel is a house he doesn't have the keys no nope. he doesn't live there there's no water or electric in his name nothing okay i simply visit there at the house for about an hour a day right I do my work and then I leave. I love how we have to preface that. Like we have to like make that known. <laughs> not my channel. Don't sub to that channel. That's or sub to that channel, but it's not my channel. Well, but so I'll but I'll be over there. Here's the thing. There's this website called Spam four oh four. Oh boy. And what they've been doing, right, is they've been taking down GTA websites and channels left and right. Mm -hmm. Like basically they have like this form set up where people just report, hey, look, this video is in violations of YouTube somehow. Like they literally know the YouTube terms of service to a T and they're flagging everyone. Can I say something funny about this? Because we might talk about this or whatever. But basically, as a joke, there's a gentleman named Dom is live. He makes Grand Theft Auto videos. It's always like a tip. Or we yeah. found this, or this is what's going on, or these are the new things for the DLC, whatever, right? And he's notorious for putting ridiculous tags and tags in the description and doing all this stuff. Like, that's what he's like. That's That was a big deal, right? Yeah. Like, suppose, like I don't know. That seems like a weird thing to make a big deal about. But anyways, as a joke one day, I hit him up, and I was like, Dom, man, I, need, I got a GTA 5 video out. I need some tags, bro. Like, as a joke, you know? Like, I'm kind of uh -huh. busting his balls a little bit. He follows me and DMs me a bunch of tags, and I'm like, Fuck it, I'll use them, you know? <laughs> Did they work? Um, they, if you typed in GTA 5 heist or DLC, um, then my video was showing up in that search. But at the same time, people weren't really searching for it, so it didn't, like, take off, like, millions of views. You should just, like, straight up remove that video or something i'm not gonna remove it i'll just change the tags like i kind of did it as, it's funny though because like douchebaggy things that done in youtube i make fun of them and then i i use them not all the time but i'll use them as a joke yeah good example team art uploads videos i'll do a re-upload of the re-upload as a joke the trailer the trailer right yeah and i'll do it as a joke and everyone's like haha that's funny and it's like it's not me being a scumbag it's me making fun of the scumbags by mocking them and like doing it. literally dom is has 200,000 subscribers dumb is live his channel is based on straight up tags you know what's i got it like, i got it i got the only reason for his so success. He, did a, he did a video about that today right yeah so i watched it at first i was scratching my head because i'm like that's you bro yeah but, dear, but here's the thing though during the video he's like look this person does it this person does it hey and you'll never believe this but this person and it was him he's like this is me i do it yeah. So at least he like says, yeah, he's not trying to like say everyone's bad, but I'm good. He's like, yeah, I do. I did it or do it. Too I hard. really don't like Dom because um, he's overly nice and I feel like he's scamming me. 
every time I talk to him. <laughs> like if someone always comes at you with a smile. You're like, what the fuck are you up to? What buddy? are you up to? I don't trust you. I don't trust people that are overly happy all the time. Those I hate are, that. Those are the serial killers, bro. I'm telling you, there was this dude on YouTube, and I hate just sitting there bashing and talking about <laughs> fucking people, right? right? Because there's a good chance that Aviator is a nice guy. What but happened? I haven't heard from him in a while. This motherfucker, when you talk to him, he's like, hi. Like, there's sunshine coming out of this motherfucker's mouth, right? <laughs> like, every time he talks, like, glitter and rainbows are, like, exploding from him. And I don't want to seem like an asshole, but, dude, when you come across as that super happy motherfucking go-lucky dude, you're a rapist. <laughs> like, you're a fucking pedophile, right? I don't see... He's not a pedophile, but that's funny. I'm not saying... Like, he's probably not a pedophile, right? But listen... The king is like, 95% not a pedophile. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> Every time he, that dude would talk to me, I'm thinking to myself, pedophile, 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 right. or, or rapist, or, or serial killer, or something, right? Because automatically, we have to sift through bullshit every single day. Yep. As human beings, we are lied to in almost every fucking you know human interaction if it lasts longer than 10 minutes. There's always something that isn't 100% truthful. You know, we live in a world of lies, right? So we have to sift through bullshit every single day. And once one motherfucker comes up to you, right? And he's like, hi, I'm super excited to talk to you. I've been waiting for this moment, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I, you know, uh, thank you. Thank you from the heavens for, for inviting me into this call and stuff like that. Like aviator used to say this stuff to people and it would just like red flags. Go I just off. don't understand the whole, um, okay. Like let's say someone like I invited people to an open lobby, right? There were so many people that are like, I need to say this. It needs to be on record, but blade, I love your videos. I've been watching them since I'm like, they give me this whole speech and I'm like, I'm so grateful for it. But just be like, hey, thanks, you know, thanks for being you, dude. And then maybe that's it. You know what I mean? But they, they make it know. seem like you're royalty. I don't, and I, I get uncomfortable when people, like, make me seem like I'm, like, some some mythical creature. Dude, like, I today, don't. Today, I felt like a fucking king. Why? What happened? I went to Tim Hortons, right? The one right up here. Okay. And the fucking drive through line or whatever was, like, around the place like it always is. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going to go in. So I go in, and this fucker's staring at me behind the counter. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Why is this dude staring at me? He gets up. He pushes the dude away from the cash register so he can go up and be the cash register okay. to serve me. That's and up. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why does this motherfucker hate me? Uh -huh. Right? Because I'm thinking this dude is, wants to say something. Like, he's going to say something like, Fuck you, something, right? Welcome, like, welcome to Tim Hortons. Fuck you. I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> how does this dude even fucking know me? Right. right? Get up there. He goes, Keemstar, what's up? You're friends with Blade? Bam. I go, yes. And he goes, yeah, I've watched some of your videos. And so I bring up stuff to buy, right? I bought some, like, Tim Hortons, like, coffee, like the actual grounds. And then I yeah. bought a coffee. Didn't charge me for it. That's what's up. Okay. And he knew me from YouTube. Okay, so he, if he mentioned cool. my name, what I would like to do is, I don't know what time you went to there, but we should try to go there during the same time just to say hi. He hit me up on Twitter, so I, I like literally have his Twitter. Bam. So at some point, yeah, he I think he's more of a Blade fan than, uh, than a Keem fan. Right on. So, you know, every once in a while, people find out about me from you. That's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> We, we're not going to get into this, but we've had discussions like it's such a stupid, egotistical argument. I think I've won at this point, but OK, please, dude, I'm on the radar. I am. Dude, I would ne you would never, ever, ever have a situation where there was a missing keen plane. I'm always on the radar. <laughs> I'm not falling off let's, that radar. Okay, I, let's not really get into this, but has, has any new developments happened on oh the, my not, God, the missing I plane? Oh, my God. I hate the missing plane story. It's pretty stupid. I don't want to sound... I don't want yeah, to be insensitive to be like, fuck that plane. But it's the, like, okay. Dude, if you, if you say, okay, I'm sick of the plane, instantly people are like, you don't care about 300 people, 300 lives that are at stake? Dude, it's been a week. Those lives are gone, bro. Like, more people died today than or I think, in the last I hour think, I think this is a, a this is this might be the they landed in the mountains and they survived miraculous story because I, I, I you know why and it sounds fucked up 
but I think that the government is basically looking at events and they plan. I think they honestly plan events almost like a TV series wants to keep people interested. Oh so, my God. So, that is so fucking good. Okay. So they're like, Oh, okay. How do we get ratings up or basically, or it might be this, I know it sounds fucked up, but we're about to do some fucked up shit. We need to deviate the American public's attention. Okay. Yeah. We need to deviate from that problem. So we're going to pull a move. Okay. We are going to fly this fucking plane and it's going to crash or something. But like maybe I know this sounds fucking conspiracy theorists. Right. But maybe the fucking pilot's going to like, you know, land it or whatever. And then it's going to be this miraculous thing where they get saved and they come back. They're going to make movies about it. They're going to interview it all over fucking 2020. And it's going to be this thing with like the people of this thing. And so they're going to make like five movies out of it. And the whole public is going to be talking about it. And be like, this is so great. And meantime, uh, Something's going to happen that we just got to brush over. I didn't have a course of action, right? I, I wasn't able to get on YouTube, all right? Well, I didn't know exactly how I would do YouTube, right? I put out a tweet, and I say I'm sick of the plane story. I feel like it's a planned attack mm -hmm. to um, avoid us from the more important news. Tons of hate. So I literally had to make an audio response to say what I really wanted to say, and that right. was this, right? Dude... Russia is invading Ukraine. Okay. They're invading another country. All right. It's almost like Russia versus the West fighting over uh, Ukraine. Right. And uh, basically the United States is like going to do sanctions against the Russians. I mean, w this thing's building up to be potentially World War Three. It's a scary time right now between Russia and the United States mm -hmm. once again. Now, while that's going down, they introduced a new SOPA uh, through the house. It just has a different name on it. But it's basically SOPA again. They're trying to pass, right? Yeah. While all this is going on for the last week, if you turn on CNN at any point in the day, they're talking about the plane. And that's not exaggeration. They're not literally not putting out any other news. Yeah. Like, they're talking about this missing plane for hours on end. Well, I don't understand how you could talk about the missing plane story for hours on end there. What information, and especially if you don't have any information. Okay, the, good example. I fucking, I, hadn't, I haven't watched local news in Buffalo since I've been out here, right? Because I feel watching local news, unless it's like the local news I grew up on, is just weird. Like, if you ever go on vacation or something, like walk, watch local news in Hawaii, it's odd. Well... It depends. If I'm going to live in Hawaii for a couple of years, I'm going to watch the local news. Okay. But basically, I just hadn't been... It's just, it just odd. It feels uncomfortable. I'm like in someone else's house. Anyways, so I'm like, okay, I'll watch the fucking local news. I pop it on. All they are talking about was a Buffalo Sabres goalie retiring or like trading or something, <laughs> right? And they literally talked about it. You know how when they do a news story... And then you're like, okay, that's the end of the news story. And then they continue the news story. Like yeah. they continue. It's like eight segments about this. Like if you have to go to commercial and come back and still talking about the fucking goalie at the Sabres. That's what CNN is literally doing, right? There's got to be Anderson, other stories. There's got to be other stories. Anderson Cooper, Don, like every single show that there is on CNN every hour of the day is talking about this plane. And they've been doing it for seven days. And here's the thing. Here, Here's the news, right? They were like, we know, uh, at like the first days, they're like, we know that the flight pattern is this way, right? And they point like wow. to a southeastern way. So it's somewhere in the sea, right? Yeah. Then they're like, eh, it could have went this way. Then the next day, maybe it's up here. And now like, now mm -hmm. we're a week later, and now they have a completely different flight pattern due to CPS uh, or GPS or G. It's not actually GPS because you know only one signal picked it up, but... They're, they've changed it, right? So it's not news. They're not doing news. They're not reporting news. What CNN has been doing for seven days is inviting their audience to come in to try to solve a mystery. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's an entertainment spectacle, right? I would be more upset than CNN for doing what they're doing right now or any other news station than be upset with someone that says, uh, turn this off. This is not important. Right. Because at the end of the day, the news organizations are playing this mystery game. It's like a fucking game. You can turn on CNN right now and play a part of the game. What happened? Right. Was it a wormhole? Was yeah. it a terrorist attack? You can sit there and, the, and they're just. It, we talked to the victims families and some of them gave them a ride to the airport. It's like, fuck. I just came up with a really crazy concept, dude. It's not news anymore. It's a fucking spectacle. So one of the people that you mentioned, uh, Anderson Cooper, right? Mm-hmm. Don't ask me why I thought about this. I might be a little buzzed. 
But if Ellen yeah. and Anderson Cooper, okay, they would never do this because they both are... They're gay. They're both gay. But if they were to somehow fucking team up and have a kid, that would be the fucking coolest, smartest, most dignified person ever created. That's weird. Why is that weird? Because I just, I don't know. Do you like Ellen? I, l- I like Ellen, yeah. yeah. You almost said love Ellen, huh? Well, here's the thing about <laughs> Ellen, right? Is that somehow she's figured out a way to do comedy and be really good without like being dirty, you know, yeah. without being, uh, yeah. you know, real grimy. Right. Yeah. And that's, I think the same reason why we like Stephen Carell is, you know, and when I say we, I mean everyone who doesn't. Right. Yeah, and yeah. it's because he's figured out this, this quirky type of comedy thing yeah. that, um, there's a lot of aw- awkwardness. I just, involved I love, that's... I love Ellen's energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Ellen's the shit. I don't care. Like, um, Ellen's fucking funny. And the thing is that Ellen's funny and it's a person that's funny to me, but also funny to like my mom. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, it's a very old, um, old style comedy. You know where everything's so dark now, and mm-hmm. and, and and I just it, it's good. It's good stuff. The thing with Anderson Cooper is, uh, I don't know, dude. That kid would not be that cool because Anderson Cooper cannot keep a straight face. Ellen can keep a straight face. <laughs> Right, I I think Anderson Cooper is a fucking stand up dude. Like I think he can't keep a straight face. So. There's like videos of Anderson. Oh, Cooper, the Anderson like, Cooper laughing. cracking, cracking yeah. up shit. Well, what's wrong with that? That means he's human, dude. There was a time where he did a whole broadcast wasted. For real, that's yeah. awesome. He did it drunk and he was like stuttering all his words and stuff, dude. So the first off, I don't know what it is, but like people drunk or people maybe a little high or whatever, but trying to like pretend they're not and going on national tv is the fucking greatest thing ever yeah. there okay what was that show called so there's the today show right which i'm never up for okay but then after the today show it's like the after show and it's like a uh, kathy kathy regis's old wife or whatever kathy lee giver kathy lee giver Gifford, and, and, this, and this other lady and it used to be on that show they used to get wasted on the show really they'd make they'd be like so we're going to show you how to make inexpensive at home margaritas here we go <laughs> bam and then they like they they have someone on like this bartender on there and they make this fucking vat of fucking like pure alcohol margarita mix and they get tanked on the show and you can see and you can see them slowly getting a little bit sloppy you know that's insane yeah so a lot so here's the thing so like today's show right today's show like films at like six in the fucking morning, right? Yeah. And so what happens is on the East Coast, I think it's like eight in the morning on the East Coast, right? So what happens is all these West Coast people, all the people out in Hollywood, when they come and do the show, they literally like charter a flight and get there. A lot of times these motherfuckers are out partying the night before. Yeah. And they're like, fuck, I got to be at the fucking on the East Coast in like four hours. Let's go. And so they, <laughs> they like get on the plane, maybe sleep a little bit on the plane and then go on the show. And they are fucking, some of them are still fucking drunk. It's awesome. Jay Leno used to have in his green room, he used to find out what the actors liked drink wise mm-hmm. and would have like a full bar stocked of whatever they like to drink. So people would come on and get fucking wasted before they go on the show. Well, I mean, people, that's what makes it so great. Cause if you get people a little buzzed up, you know, they're more talkative. Or oh, whatever. absolutely. So, yeah, I think they still do that. You know what I think would make me fun. I think this is like my natural evolution. Cause I wanted to be doing more streaming. I think me having playing drinking games streaming would be fucking entertaining. It could be. Yeah, what do you think? Could be a disaster. Yeah, it could be fucking just bad news bears. It could be bad news bears. It could be fucking drama alert central. Dude, I started <laughs> Dude, I'm so I'm so upset right now. Why I are started upset? I started streaming uh-huh. uh on a small website known as Hitbox. It's hitbox.com slash keemstar. And nobody watches me. Hmm. I tweeted out like nobody watches me. So, uh, like if I stream anywhere else, I get a ton of people watching. They love it. Good times. Uh, they why don't you the get? Stream. Why don't you get the link changer so it looks like it says like Twitch TV, and then when they click <laughs> on it, it goes to the hitbox. Dude, I get like thirty viewers. What? It's that sad. Like I can't get past it. I don't you'd, know. Get, you'd get like a, a, a k a, a thousand. Uh, well, I mean, if I had a YouTube channel, I could just upload a video and be like, "Hey, yeah. I'm streaming," but I I don't really have that. I only have Twitter. But you, still, you were like the only person that I know. I'm sorry. There's probably other people. I know there's other people out here, but you would religiously stream on YouTube. Yeah. And it was money, though. For whatever reason, it was just it was money. 
Well, I mean, I got banned on Twitch. Did I ever tell you how I got banned how on Twitch? How you banned on Twitch? Listen to this shit, right? So I go back to Twitch uh, for the first time. Dude, like, eventually all you're going to be allowed on is like Hotmail, and that's it. <laughs> and I got a fucking funny high story to tell you about that too. So anyhow, I went to Twitch TV, and I started streaming maybe about two years ago. Uh-huh. All right? I'm streaming on Twitch TV, and I forget that I'm streaming, right? Because it was like one of the first times I ever streamed over there, right? Uh-huh. I just had a few people over, uh, like maybe 10 people. I forgot that it was streaming when I got done playing my game because I was so into the game. Yeah. Could have been high. Who knows? Whatever. Uh, anyhow, I turn off the uh, the TV or whatever, and then I turn it back on like maybe an hour later, and I pull up a movie. I purchase a movie, and I start watching it, right? The whole time I'm watching this movie, you have streaming. no idea that I'm streaming, That's right? fucked. So the channel gets banned and oh, suspended. So, weak. so I'm trying to reach and contact someone to explain, hey, look, uh, you know, I got my channel banned. I need help uh, explaining the situation. So I'm talking to the admin. He lets me go, right? He's okay. like, dude, here's a second chance. Just, you know, you can't stream copyrighted material or whatever, right? Of course, of course, of course. I start streaming over there. I start getting like a thousand people a night, right? Nice, nice. I'm, I was streaming uh, maybe for a month or whatever on Twitch. It starts getting real popular, right? All of a sudden, one night, I remember this like it was yesterday, had 650 viewers, and people brought up um, who's the dude? Obviously, Jesus. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I try to explain to my audience that obviously Jesus. That dude's gone, right? Yeah, he's gone. Okay. But I try to explain to my audience that obviously Jesus is like a scam artist, right? Like he's just uh-huh. a con in all his videos and he tries to act smart, but he's not really smart. He's just doing a con with his audience. Right. And I said, I'll show you. So I pulled up his video and I would play a little bit of what he was said, what he's saying. And then I would pause it and then explain the audience the manipulative tactics that he was using within his video, right? Okay. While this is going on, right, obviously Jesus is telling Twitch that he's going to sue them, that he's going to file all these lawsuits and stuff because I'm playing his video, which, by the way... Yes, it was his video, and yes, I was streaming it, right? Uh But it's fair use, and it's fair use because I'm critiquing the video, which I have a right to do, right? I do. I'm within the law. I'm within the rights, right? Can I I talk about obviously Jesus? Obviously Jesus is literally the reason behind one of my most successful videos, okay? How? Okay, so do you remember Crisis? Yes, I remember the crisis. Okay, so crisis either was, I forgot it was either crisis or crisis two, one of the two. And I think it was crisis. Anyways, I'm playing it. I get a gameplay on crisis. I'm going about to commentate it, right? And someone GFX Labs, yeah. GFX Labs tweets out, "This is the dude leaving all the hate on your videos." I'm like, "What the fuck does this mean?" So I watched the, the fucking one of the best videos we've ever made. Okay, uh-huh. it was um, not obviously Jesus. You, I'm sorry, obviously Jesus has nothing to do with this. Uh, you crazy? <laughs> what? You, what Ukrainian limbs? Ukrainian limbs. Mind blown. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Of, I'm just thinking about people that like completely fucked up that whole story. Okay, can, well, can I tell it anyway? Fuck it. You know, Ukra- <laughs> you remember Ukrainian limbs? <laughs> Have you ever seen the Ukrainian limbs quits YouTube? I know, but you built that up, and everybody listening was like, "What the fuck did well, you, obviously you, Jesus you, Ukrainian, do to play?" You, Ukrainian limbs and obviously Jesus—that's like the same thing. No, they were the best friends. Okay, but Ukrainian limbs, and if you guys don't know who you, you fuck, I can't say his name. Ukrainian limbs. If you don't know who that guy is, that guy is. If you've been on the YouTube scene for a while, you remember when Woody's Gamer Tag did the March Madness, right? Yep. Ukrainian Limbs was famous for the guy that ran the March Madness on Woody's Gamer Tags channel Channel, back in 2011. Okay. This dude ended up fucking over Woody and like quitting and leaving Woody with the whole fucking thing. And then basically he got a bunch of subs and stuff from Woody's channel and then went off and started his own brand. Yeah. Like it was just a ploy to fuck over Woody and get his subscribers. And so, okay. So anyway, so this dude makes a video. Of him quitting YouTube, right? And so it is one of the greatest, like, it's awesome video. It's an amazing video. I really, can we link this in the description? Because I want you to watch it. Uh, there's no description to link it, but yeah. Okay. Uh, just look up Ukrainian Limbs Quits YouTube. You'll find it. Anyway, so this dude starts basically going to the reason why he's quitting YouTube and then starts telling everyone off. And so he names all the famous people at the time. So as I'm listening to this, I'm like, he's mentioning... 
he's mentioned this person, that person, like, and I know I'm in that same group. And when he mentions me, it's fucking hilarious. Can we watch it real quick? Yeah. Can we play it over hey, the we, thing? We can play it because we're not even uploading to YouTube. Who's going to flag us down? Okay. Like, literally, we could just play it through the air. So if you find that video, we'll play it. I'm looking for it right now. So, I mean, that's a good story and all, but let me finish what I was saying. So I was critiquing him, right? And uh, Twitch basically contacted me, and they were like, yeah, you're banned on Twitch forever. I'm like, why? I have a right to do this. So then I started getting mouthy with the guy, right? That's how I really fucked up. After he told me that I'm never getting unbanned, I got mouthy with him. And uh, and then there was another thing where Twitch basically got hacked and all their information of their users was leaked. So if you had a Twitch account that's over a year old, you know, some hacker has your password, some hacker has your account, right? And what Twitch was doing was lying to everyone and saying that they weren't hacked and saying that they didn't experience this and that they're people's personal information was not being released. Twitch went into like uh basically you know PR mode and they were trying to like convince everyone that their personal information wasn't uh getting released or whatever. And uh I just put them on blast like you know it was it was public knowledge that this was happening. But um after that they just basically told me that um I'm not allowed on Twitch ever again. I would make accounts yeah. and literally not let anyone know what my accounts were and they were getting banned somehow. Like, so I don't know if they were like IP, IP tracking yeah. me, but like seriously, the people over at Twitch, I love you. I love your parties. Um, but dude, you can't be a cunt when drama or exposes the truth, dude. You got to take it like a man. All right. You ready? Play it. Fuck is up, y'all. On this 14th day of January 2011, it is with a heavy heart that I announce I'm retiring from YouTube. This silly ass internet playground is simply not going anywhere. I don't want to wade through the stagnant <laughs> waters any longer. Wait, I gotta pause this for a second. Sure. All right. Here's the thing. This is what I think's hilarious, right? Mm -hmm. This motherfucker, I remember him back at this time, along with a lot of other people who were just bitching and complaining about YouTube. Everyone's a fucking villain. Everyone's an asshole. Yeah. You know, Dude, imagine if this motherfucker lived right now in 2014 YouTube. Like, this shit is like a giant fucking scum hole. Like, yeah. it's worse than it's ever been. <laughs> right. Like, imagine if, like, the times were good back then. Yep, the times I, were great back then. That was a great time on YouTube. I've completely lost interest in watching 99.9999999101011% of the people out there. You've all failed to evolve as a community. You're all wasting your fucking time. No one cares about you. Just like no one will shed a tear when I'm gone. Some people have speculated that. I Dude, <laughs> the thing that I hate about the comment, no one likes you or no one cares about you. Mm -hmm. It always comes from a guy with a very small following, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes even like a tweet from a Twitter that has 10 followers, right? To someone that has like thousands and thousands of fans yeah like you can't be a, a, a literally uh a, a randy or a no one and then go to someone like I, I you can hate minnesota burns all you want right yeah. i don't like the guy right but you can't tweet at minnesota burns saying fuck you no one likes you because right. everything <laughs> else <laughs> you can't tweet That's that so to true. him because anything else you say after that is invalid, it's right? Void. You could literally find Jimmy Hoffa. You could solve the mystery <laughs> of life. No one gives a fuck because you just told someone, you know, that nobody likes you. Like you <laughs> just completely discredit yourself. I was the greatest of all time. I simply knew it all along. I mean, from the beginning, I was the best. To this day, I remain the best. I highly doubt you'll find anyone better. I don't care if you disagree because you're probably the 16-year-old cunt that I mean mug at the mall just waiting for you to say something back. At this time, what? I'd like to express all the thoughts and emotions I held back while I was still in this pitiful community scrapping with 13-year-olds over what is right and what is wrong. Yeah, is he reading this? I don't know. I feel like he's reading no, this. No, I don't think he's reading it because when he starts naming names, he literally has to think for a second, okay? Maybe I think this first part he's reading. Fuck CNNers. You aren't the programming director for Cartoon Network. Stop talking to everyone like they're a kid with Down syndrome. Uh, 
Fuck you. I mean, he I hit that watch Mr. Rogers. I'd go to youtube.com and type Mr. Fucking Rogers. <laughs> fuck Wings of Redemption. Fuck Blame Truth. Woody's all right, but he doesn't give a fuck about you. He just likes the residual income. Fuck Machine. That is so true. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. It's not even a diss on Woody. We got to hear that part again. It's not even really a diss on Woody. He just doesn't like him, but he's letting you know. Fuck this... Blame Truth. Woody's all right, but he doesn't give a fuck about you. He just likes the residual income. <laughs> fuck Machine Respawn. Fuck Sark. He isn't funny at all. Fuck Tabe. If you didn't have an accent, you wouldn't be shit. You listen to terrible emo music, and I fucking can't stand you. Fuck Only Use Me Blade. He's all right. He's a chubby guy living the dream, but don't put him on a pedestal. <laughs> El Presidor looks like the retarded redneck from The Waterboy. The one who talk like this. <laughs> fuck Small Beans. Fuck Moody Sweet. They get... They get famous off their gameplay, but everything they do is practically set up. It's not real fame, and Ooh. everything they do is just Moody deliberately Sweden set up, so fuck them anyway. Beans. Mighty Hutch is all right. I have no problem with him. He's a big reason I got started, so ultimately he's a big reason I wasted the last year of my life on this bullshit. But overall, <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> How do you praise someone and tell them fuck them at the same time? He figured out a way. You were my inspiration to get involved in this. Thank you. But also, you fuck wasted you. my fucking life. <laughs> You allowed me to dream, but my dream turned into a nightmare. Fuck you. So ultimately, he's a big reason I wasted the last year of my life on this bullshit. <laughs> but overall, he doesn't give a fuck about you. He doesn't give a fuck about anyone. He got a job out of this, and that's all he cares about. So he doesn't give a fuck when you call him a hard skull brother bullshit like that. Fuck anyone with an X or... Oh. oh. What happened? I don't know. The computer's it? plugged in, right? Yeah, it looks plugged in. Is it not plugged in on that end? Dude, the Receive video got banned. Oh, uh, there it goes. No exceptions. Sorry, that was dramatic. Sorry. Fuck anyone who ever wrote first in the comment box. Jay-Z is tight. He doesn't give a fuck about you. He does this because he loves it. He doesn't get anything else out of this. He's a bigger man you'll ever be, so don't fucking bring him down. Jay-Z? Jay-Easy. Oh. Ricky Chops lives for YouTube. He's legit. I warn you, Ricky, not to get caught up in this game. We're still grown men playing around in a world of teenage twats, but, you know, you're good at what you do, and I hope you continue to love making videos. My last personal note, uh... I probably wasted the most time working with a guy named Mr. Sinclair. You're a fucking joke, Mr. Sinclair. You're a 22-year-old who still lives with his parents. You don't have a job. You try to turn this bullshit into real work, but you don't have a single ounce of talent or original thought in your frail redneck body. So my advice to you is to go flip some burgers at Wendy's. Yo, I don't even know I some of these people. I don't, I don't know those. Fuck. I just don't know the last person. Because then you could at least get your own place. You wouldn't keep your little sister up at night because you're beating off too loud. Overall... Fuck you. Fuck everybody. This shit is a joke. Stop wasting your time on here. Go read a book. Go lift some weights. Do something real. This is not real. This is bullshit. There's no way of justifying this to yourself, so stop lying. I'm never going to return. Thanks for the memories. For the last motherfucking time, I'm out here like a motherfucking A4. Okay, now. So, okay, I, yeah. So, so answer the question. How did this video right here result in your most viewed video of all time? So I was like, this is awesome. I thought that video was awesome. Like, I, I just find fucking humor in it, right? Right. And Crisis was out, but no one really gave a shit about Crisis. So I decided to make a video about Crisis, yeah. but to talk about this video, because I thought it was very entertaining, right? <laughs> so I titled my video, <laughs> like, Crisis 2, Quitting YouTube. So oh. everyone, I didn't. I honestly didn't mean this, okay? I know it sounds like bullshit. I honestly didn't mean this. So everyone thought that Only Use Me Blade was quitting YouTube, so they instantly clicked on the video. Yeah. So because that video got a shit like it's not my most viewed, but it's got a shit ton of views. And then everyone went over to this video and witnessed it. Now, Ukrainian limbs after this happened. Right. Right. After because the, the video of him quitting was six months later. Someone re uploaded and that's what I linked. Right. So because he, he uploaded it and they made it private real quick. So who the fuck saw it, you know? And um, anyway, so the guy re-uploaded it, and when I all this you linked the re-upload, the re-upload. Oh, so um, because he closed his channel down, right? Right. So um, basically, the rumor is this: he saw all this buzz from everyone watching his his video of him quitting. He thought it was like since look, one hundred twenty thousand views on a channel that has less than a thousand subs. Right. So he thought that there was. There was buzz, buzz for, him. for him that people wanted him back. That he thought he was like the greatest or whatever, right? So he came back, yeah, and didn't do anything. He quit. See the thing with re, whatever the I can't say Ukrainian. Oh, why can't I say that? Ukrainian. Fucking, Ukrainian. Uh, the thing with Ukrainian limbs is 
this motherfucker like wanted YouTube so bad. Like he wanted it more than he wanted to fucking breathe. It was ridiculous. When this dude decided that he was going to be like some superstar or whatever, he fucking went and got a hitting camera and like went to a job interview. That video is awesome. And started telling them that like his qualifications were being good in Call of Duty and shit like that. Trying that to was get... actually a good video. That was a good video. I just saw it as desperate because I knew who the guy was. Right. You know, I knew the guy, you know, I don't know. But anyhow, uh, that's that. Um, so we're going to take a break. But before we do, if you are a Drama Alert fan, uh, please go to dramaalert.net. I'm trying to build a bulletproof website uh, that's, you know, can can be a fucking network news website, like something on the lines of uh, CNN or TMZ, you know, a, a website that is trusted, that there's security, and that we can always get the news to you about what's going on in the community every single day. And there's a donate button over there. I'm building it now. If you're a fan and you can afford to throw some dollars, please do so. I'll try to shout out everyone that does uh, on my personal Twitter. We're going to take a break. Sorry I had to get that promo out there. It's important. And, um, oh, one more thing. If you're not subscribed to the new Drama Alert channel, it is free. YouTube.com slash free Drama Alert. Anything that you would like to promote or say? I feel kind of uh, like I'm taking up all the promotion. I mean, with me, it's just I got the Only Be Blade channel. Just been... (laughs) Shit, if you you don't know, now you know. I don't know. (laughs) We'll be right back after this break. Bam. What is up? We are back. Bam. Okay, I was I was about to tell this out to Keem outside, but he's like, save save it for the podcast. (laughs) So all right, here's the thing. Um so when I went to Seattle, right? Got to smoke a lot of weed. A lot of weed, and it's pretty much legal out there, right? Yep, yep. So we're standing outside the wedding. Like the wedding, we're outside. The wedding's inside, and we're smoking a blunt, right? Smoking a blunt outside the wedding. Smoking a blunt outside the wedding, right? So these fucking cops start, like, walking by, and I get into paranoid mode. Like, Oh, shit. 5-0. And, and everyone's like, why are you fucking freaking out? It's completely legal. And um, so it's near the end of it, and I fucking toss it. I, to- uh-huh. I toss the joint, like, in the street, right? Not the joint, the blunt in the street, right? And the cop is like, hey, hey. And I'm like, fuck, am I getting busted? This is so <laughs> so And he comes up to me, he's like, don't litter. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, put that in a butt can or something, dude. Like, don't litter. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. Sorry, Mr. Green. I'm like, <laughs> at that point, I'm like, okay, it's definitely on. I did. He did this is interesting, dude. I did a a a, a video with with a, a paid advertisement at the beginning of my video, right? Yeah. And whenever I do those, I I I say from the get go, like this is an ad. Um, I'm getting paid to say this. This, you know, there's no ads in the video. I'm completely upfront about it, right? Yeah. And um, so I submitted it, and they needed to give approval, right? And they were like, "I need you to change something." I'm thinking, like, "What did I need to change?" We did a whole cartoon about this conversation. No. Is this the thing, the conversation that me, you, and Hex had? No, not at all. This is another situation exactly like that? Yeah. Okay. Um, No, not exactly like that at all. Okay. Basically, I did the, the first part is like a vlog in my room, right? That's the first section, like a little 30-second vlog in my room. There is a poster of Sade, who's an R&B singer, and it's like black and white, and she's like holding herself, like cross-armed across her chest, but she's technically naked, but you don't see any nudity. Right. And I love that poster. I've had it for years. It's fucking awesome. And he was like, yeah, they're kind of conservative, so they don't really want a naked person behind you. I know there's no nudity, but can you can you basically redo it? And I was like, uh. In my mind, I'm like, it's not really that bad, but fuck it. So I just closed it. Like, there's, it's not like it's adding to the video. You know what right. I mean? Like, if that added artistic things to the video or something that I have but a But I can opinion. see your lazy ass being like, ah, uh, fuck. I just, I don't want to redo it. No, no, all I did was just, um, I just opened my door so it covered the poster up. So you redid the video? Yeah. Just just yeah. that one part, little 30 second part. I didn't redo the commentary, I just did read that, that little part. Yeah, but I can see you being like, when they told you that, being really frustrated they have to redo it. No, not really. I wasn't really frustrated with it. Like, Maybe if I had to redo the whole commentary, I might have been kind of butthurt, but I didn't have to redo the commentary, I just had to redo that little 30 second You know segment. what, I take that back, because I've literally seen you do commentaries over and over again. 
Yeah, I do it till I get it right. Yeah, you don't just sling it. Yeah, I mean sometimes it's it's some of my best ones are the first first go around, but like a lot of times I'll if I feel like I didn't hit the points that I wanted to, or if I feel like there was too much slow action, or if I feel it wasn't good, I'll re-listen to it. If I don't like it, I'll redo it. That's cool. That's cool, dude. The, <sighs> okay, so when I play. I have missed this, okay? Like, I went yeah. to this mode where I would play and I would stockpile gameplays, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I got into this old me self where after I get a gameplay, I'm, like, fucking ready to commentate it right then. I know. It's, me too. It's like, I'm like, I want to fucking go. Like, And it sucks because I'll play in a party with someone and they're still wanting to play. I'm like, but now I'm just like, hey, don't take this the wrong way. I'm going to go commentate that. I'm fucking super pumped. Let's go. Bam. I need to find a place to upload my videos. I'm like doing Titanfall videos, and I got to figure out how to how to do that. Well, my network- are you are you digging Titanfall? Oh God, I love it! I love it! I'm a beast, dude. I've been I've been getting gameplays that are like if you were to compare it to COD, like it would be like on a pro level. What about? I mean, is there a way to see how many people you actually killed and not just bots? Yeah, it tells you how many pilots you've killed. Oh, bam. stuff like that. If you want, we might. I could bring the Xbox up. We could play a little bit. Okay, I'll, I'll check out the the Titanfall. I mean, I'll give it another try. You know what? The thing is, is that I found from other people, if you approach it like it's Call of Duty, not are not only going to get bored of it, but you're going to be bored of it because you're playing it like Call of Duty. But if you approach it with the parkour and the fucking running yeah. around stuff like that, and really get into it, it's it's a different game. The, the thing with Titanfall for me is, it, I think it just needs a warthog. You, you put a vehicle in there, it'd make it so much better. That's vehicles would be missing. hella fun. I don't need crazy vehicles. I just need one vehicle that kind of has like a low gravity aspect. So there could be... That'd you know, be sick. Uh, That'd be sick. So there could be scenarios where you're just flying through the air, like, you know, shooting or whatever. That's the only thing that's missing. Everything else uh, is solid. It's fun. Um, there just needs to be a vehicle. And that's that, that's the only thing. I'm gonna, so. I'm gonna give it another try, and I, you know what? If I ever do start making Titanfall videos, I mean, I, I don't have an Xbox One, so that that's that's gonna hinder it. But if I do start making Titanfall videos, I'm gonna play it like a normal person, not trying to kick everybody. I don't. Okay, so listen, when someone does a review, don't you feel like they should have the right to say whatever they want? Yeah. Dude, when someone does a review and I don't agree with their review, I hate them. Yeah. I fucking hate him. I'm oh. like, you're wrong. And it's a, it's not fact. We, mm-hmm. It's opinion, right? Yeah. You know, if you say you don't like a game, I shouldn't be able to be like, uh, you sh- you do like that game. Why are you lying? Okay. You know? I'll like, you, I shouldn't feel that way, but I do. Afro uh, Negro, and that's <laughs> literally his YouTube name. Afro Negro, right? Okay. Isn't it? Are you talking about Modern War Negro? Modern War Negro. I'm sorry. I thought it was Afro Negro. Afro Negro. What the fuck? I thought it was Afro Negro. Okay. No, Modern Warfare Negro is a YouTuber. He's a pretty big YouTuber or whatever. He did a review on Titanfall, and I happened to see it. And he was basically like, yeah, uh, there's no campaign. This is a bad game. Don't buy it. I was like, what? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to say this. It made me so mad. If, a fucking campaign. If someone, really? If someone that I like, right, comes out. And does a does a review or does a commentary that I don't agree with, right? My initial response is this. This is what my initial response is. Okay? Yeah. My initial response is I don't agree with you, but you formulated some opinions and you tried to back it up. Really? One second, guys. Right in the middle. Hello? This is live. Okay. Mia wants to talk to me. His daughter needs to hear his father's voice. Sorry. We shouldn't be answering phone calls during the podcast, but... It's family. Hi, Mia. How you doing? Blade says hi. Are you going to... Are you coming home soon? I'm coming home. I'm coming home. La, 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 la. Cool. All right. Daddy's got to go. He's doing his show, okay? Okay. Love ya. Bye. Bam. Wow, that was I. I felt so rude, but then so obligated. I'm sorry. It's, it's his daughter, guys. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> but okay, so if I hear a review or something or commentary or whatever, and, so, and I don't necessarily agree with them, I'm like, okay, that's fine. You have a different opinion, whatever. But the thing is, is when if they have too many strikes, 
as far as differing opinions, I start to think maybe I don't, I wouldn't get along with this person because I'm starting to not like his point of views or her point of views right. and stuff. So if someone consistently puts out commentaries and I'm like, you know what? You're, I'm not, I'm starting to not like you. I, I used to watch this dude that did movie reviews, right? Yeah. I liked his energy. I liked how he did movie reviews. And then like three straight movies that I ended up watching because I had that, that one website you can watch new movies on. I'm not right. going to tell what it is because I don't want to blow it up. But he did three straight movie reviews of movies that I loved and he just dogged him. And I'm just like, you know what? We don't have the same taste in movies. Bye. You know what? The thing is, though, I, I think this is the issue, right? I think that society, uh, especially Western society, right? Mm-hmm. We're moving to this whole thing where... where um, we can't say things are good anymore. We're moving to this this type of uh, thing to look at entertainment and to criticize and dog it. And that's like part of the sport of the entertainment. We're moving into this. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a YouTuber and I deal with little kids that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, attempt to troll all day. I'm not saying it because that. I'm saying that because if you think about um YouTube, right? Every single music video that comes out, like there's this parody, and usually the parodies are talking shit about the artist, right? Right? And there's, it's just like it, that's such a different world from like the 1950s where music artists were looked at as like awesome, right? Right. Now we look at these people, like these superstars and stuff, as awesome, and we hate them. Right. What the fuck is like, that? Like we make fun of Justin Bieber, we make fun of uh, One Direction, we make fun of all these people. Like I'm like I'm thinking like who do we like? like yeah, who, who's a famous Ellen, person that we like? We Ellen, like we like Ellen. That's it. <laughs> like it's it, seriously like the, there'll be people that we like, but we like to hate. Yeah. So so here's the thing. A lot of, like okay. So Titanfall comes out right. All they sent all us YouTubers out to play Titanfall. We played it right, and a lot of people loved it. So they do these videos and they're like, we I fucking love this game. This is fun. Blah blah blah. And a lot of people were like, well, you only like it because they sent you out there and like you're paid to say that, right? I do a video and I'm just saying, uh, sorry, I don't really dig it. Like I didn't dig yeah. playing it, right? And a lot of people were like, oh yeah, you're carrying the torch for the truth tellers. I'm like, no, that's not the case. These guys, and a lot of them, I've talked to them, like they really like it. <laughs> and it's like you're almost, if you say you like a game, they think that you're like a sellout or a scumbag. But here's the problem. Here's the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Who the fuck went to the COD Ghost release and said they liked the game. Everybody. Uh, Yeah, I mean, mine was like, mm, I don't, mine was like, I don't know. That's what, I remember what, the video, I was like, I don't know, guys. Like, this might be good, might be bad, I can't tell. That's what my, my take on it was. I took a little safer thing. Uh, no, when we played that, no one said this is a shitty game. That's the thing, though. That's why your audience was happy that you dogged Titanfall. I love Titanfall. Uh-huh. They're not paying me to say that. I love the game. Yeah. Right? But your audience loved when you dogged Titanfall because they feel like they can trust you. Because every one of these motherfuckers oh. went to COD Ghost release and just got done telling everybody, this game is great. So, speaking of trust, I read the comments, right? And I read the tweets. And now the comments for the cast are literally tweets to us or on our own videos. There's been videos of mine that people literally don't ask anything about the video. They just re- reply to something about the podcast, right? And this came up a couple times, but the question was this. On the previous podcast, I said that Kid Cudi was one of the reasons why I broke up with my girlfriend, right? Yeah. And I'll quickly tell that story. Basically, I was drunk. My buddy who sold tickets, that's why we started talking about my buddy who, used to, who sells tickets. He, um, there was a thing. He was talking about the Kid Cudi concert. And I heard it, and I was drunk, and I was, and she, and the, my girlfriend really loved Kid Cudi. She thought she, it was amazing. Like she played that both the albums all the time. So on the last podcast, you started this story, but never got to finish. Never it. got to finish it. Okay. Right? And so it was the situation where I was with her, and I was like, you know what? I got fucking Kid Cudi tickets, and she was like all pumped up. I hadn't got them yet, right? So I went to my buddy. I was like, I need two Kid Cudi tickets, and he's like. He's not playing any time. Like, there's there's nothing coming up. Like, he's not even on tour. Right. And I'm, I'm like, or he might have been on. I don't know. There's nothing coming up. There's no tickets for Kid Cudi in Seattle. I was like, fuck. So I had to string that along to the point. And then it got to a point when I was like this. I was like, you know what? I apologize for stringing you along. I feel that I've been lying to you. But I was drunk when it happened. I wanted to. I want to give you the world. I knew how important it was to you. I thought there was going to be Kid Cudi. But there's not Kid Cudi. 
And she was like, you basically lied to me a bunch. I can't trust you. And <laughs> I thought, here's the thing, like, I know this is bad. And this actually changed, I think this changed me as a person. I honestly do think this changed me as a person. Wow. She, here's the thing, if I've ever lied to someone, if I, or not deceive or whatever, if I ever did something kind of shitty, I, I profess that I'm truly sorry about it. And hopefully you can look at all the good of me and then we can get past it and we can move on and I'll never do it again. Right. But she wasn't going for it. She was basically saying, listen, you fucking lied to me. I can never believe anything you say. And then (laughs) shortly after that, we broke up. And honestly, it fucked me up. Now, one cool thing about it was this dude sitting to my left, Mr. Keemstar. At the time, I didn't really know him, but he called me and said, do you want to go to California? Bam, and we went to do the billionaire <laughs> challenge. So I the, the the breakup thing was quickly diverted with the billionaire challenge. But that that honestly, dude, that that changed me as an adult. That's awesome. That really did change me as an adult, and that's why, like, I've always had this. Here's the thing with YouTube. One beautiful thing about my YouTube channel that I have is that I've never deceived my viewers. I've always been a hundred percent with them. And Dude, I've never lied to him. There had to have been something. There's not. There's no, nothing. Nah, where I've, there's nothing. Point. There's through all my over a thousand of videos. You can you can fucking fine tooth comb through that. There's nothing on there that I I may have had some commentaries that were like messed up commentaries or something. You know, or like I talk about something stupid like wanting to have sex with a girl in Parkinson. Can we talk about the issue with Drifter and uh, gunshot or and guns for hire? <laughs> sure. Go okay. Ahead. So listen. <laughs> all right. I'm on Twitter. I was going to do a drama alert on this, but tweets were deleted. And when I read everything, it didn't make sense because the timeline got Who fucked up. Who deleted tweets? Uh, I think Guns for Hire did. Oh, uh, that's late. Uh, but anyhow, by the way, Guns, if you're listening, you're a ticking time bomb. And I cannot wait until you fucking explode, bro. I cannot wait to see you fucking make rant videos because, dude, everybody has like a special gift and a special ability, right? Mine is my ability. I can do anything. So if, right. imagine YouTube's a, a work with a bunch of cubicles. Guns for Hire went to anger management and it's back, but you look like he's about to snap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he, okay, so Guns for Hire, his, his pure genius is rants. Mm-hmm. That's it, right? Now he's like off in Minecraft land trying to be the anti him. He's trying to be more positive and I totally that's so that's cool. That's cool. You could look at it that way, but you could also look at it as like <laughs> um Guns for Hire is not being Guns for Hire anymore. Fuck him. <laughs> you know, I don't mean fuck you. You know Guns I like you. You're a good friend. But anyhow. Yeah. So um fucking this dude only use me blade. Well, explain the uh, conversation because I just butt into the conversation. So explain that part. What conversation? I butt into the conversation that him and Drifter are having. Oh, see, I fucked up the timeline. Okay, well, let me just explain. I don't understand how this all went down. All right, you explain so, to me. Um, so uh, Guns is basically saying, listen to everyone that's complaining about the rich and the poor. Uh, the The tools in order to be rich is like hard work and intelligence and the where and you need to do stuff that like a lot of people don't have the guts to do right okay so i don't want to hear any bullshit about oh poor oppressed me if you there you have a wealth of information on the internet and you and you, if you have the drive you can do it and i don't want to hear and anything. i agree with that a hundred percent so i can't read and write and i'm doing better than a lot of people so drifter says listen you're kind of teetering on a weird subject i think you should stop and guns keeps on going and then he's basically saying listen as a person that grew up extremely poor i find this extremely offensive and i'm leaving this this topic i'm leaving this conversation <laughs> and um <laughs> and so i i'm looking at this like this is ridiculous like drift drifter is cool as fuck to me okay like i like the dude honestly he was one of our best podcasts that we've had oh yeah by sure by we need th- we're gonna need to have drifter on here at some point again and so at first off as a joke and this is so ridiculous that if you don't see this as a joke then you're stupid okay right i came at him with like uh yeah that's what poor people do they quit because he like <laughs> he left the argument you know and then i i said some other like he he's like are you see i got so fucking my brain hurts out of this because right I thought that you said something, right? And right. this is why I'm really glad that I'm getting back into drama alert and doing drama alert videos daily is because I, the old Keem star a week ago would not have missed this, right? Right. I thought the timeline was is that you said something crazy and then they started fighting over it. No, no, oh. no. They were already talking and I just threw my little funny little remark in okay. there. And um, he was like, Drifter was like, 
are you, you're either drunk, serious, or trolling. And I'm like, I'm trolling, dude. Like, relax. <laughs> and then I made I made like a bunch of other tweets. Like they were kind of subtweets, but they were like in, in good in good friendship wise. I'm just like, yeah, you know, if you get a bad grade on a on a schoolwork, yeah. you say you have poor grades. Poor is literally means bad. So poor <laughs> is bad. And then I, then like people got all mad about it. And I'm like, you know, you're probably too broke to afford a sense of humor. Stop it. Dude, okay, this is this is what, okay. Now that I know the full story, yeah, it's just friendly banter. I need to tell Drifter that you're a fucking idiot. Like seriously, here's the thing: Guns for Hire says, "Look, I don't want to hear any." Bitch. You should just read the tweets instead of getting getting word of mouth from okay, me. Okay, but I'm gonna go based on how, what you told me. Okay. Hopefully, what you told me is the truth, and that's that's exactly what was with said. with stuff like this though. Not exactly should... what was said, but you yeah, know what I mean. Get, get the like basics, uh, yes. the basics, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna based on what you told me, and I hope this is the case, right? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this about the situation. Okay, Guns for Hire simply says you have to work hard. Um, if you want to succeed, you can't just cry and say, woe is me, I'm poor, right? You got to work, <laughs> right. okay? Drifter then says, I'm offended by this. I was poor once. But you're not poor right now. <laughs> you, Drifter, you, 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 you seem like an intelligent person. Um, if you watch some of your videos, I feel like you put work into them. You just proved guns for hire's point. Yeah, yeah. Like, what is the... <laughs> You were the living proof of Guns' point, right? Like, you work hard, you know, you, I stand, you educate I stand, yourself, you do well. I stand by what I said, and um, but you, you should read it to get the exact points, but I, I, everything I said was truthful, so you're good. It's almost like Drifter might have been playing a little PR there. Mm, no. No. That's I, the way I would look at it, because, listen, I'm sure when Guns said that, right, everyone in the world started tweeting at him like, well... Yeah, I'm on public assistance and my mom's a crack whore and whatever, you know, they probably went at him like not everyone's as lucky as you guns. I'm sure that dude got a ton of hate for those tweets. I right? heard some great Jew jokes. You want to hear them? Oh my God. You can't t- say Jew jokes, uh, Jewish jokes. Yeah. You can't, you can't fucking say racist what? jokes. They're not, they're not offensive though. I sure go. Okay. Why are Jewish people's noses so big? That's not offensive. It's the facts. I don't know. Because the air is free. <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> How is that wrong? It's fucking racist. It's not racist. It's, that is racist, bro. That's not racist. It's funny. If I was a Jewish person, I would not be offended by that. But if if someone honestly, and don't troll, if someone's honestly Jewish and you're honestly offended by that, let me know and I'll never tell that joke again. Bam. People are going to be offended. Whatever. I mean, if you were to say the same thing, but just uh, like put in a black person, right? Let me tell a joke to you. <laughs> okay. All right. Why are black people's noses so big? Why? Because the air is free. Did that sound racist to you? <laughs> of course it did. Sort of, yeah. All right, you made right? a point. You made a point. Whatever. We have this thing, though, right? If it's not black, it's not racist. That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucked up. It's weird. You know what? Ain't right. Yeah, I was gonna tell the Jewish child molester joke, but apparently that's fucked up. You could tell me like Jew jokes and uh, you know whatever any race you want. You could tell me a joke of right. Mm -hmm. If you say a black joke, immediately Mm -hmm. we're like, whoa, Whoa, racist jokes, racist alert, racist jokes. You should make why is that? You should make a you should make a racist alert channel. (laughs) Racist (laughs) alert. Ding ding ding. I was actually thinking about getting into uh real news, reporting like actual news. Right on. I was thinking about that. <laughs> God, what funny. uh what channel would you do it on? Not talking about YouTube. If he, if the, if a TV channel came up to you or there was a bidding war between all the channels, would you go on CNN, MSNBC? Okay, so basically I can be a news anchor anywhere. That's what you're saying. If that's the situation, yes. Where do you pick? I still um, look in the camera, bro. I yeah, me too. I still look in the camera. My bad. Go ahead. Um, I'm a capitalist, so I'd probably go to the biggest paycheck. Okay. Bam. There we go. You know. Bam. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. I honestly have to look at it. And I'm just being honest, right? You know, yeah. one guy says, "Okay, listen, we're gonna give you a hundred thousand dollars a year," and the next guy says, "We're gonna give you three million. I mean, there's not much to debate there. Yeah. Even if it's a, I less think fears. I think you can start to make integral decisions. If all the bids were around the same place. No, or if it's in a money range, if you're make, let's say someone's like, listen, 60 million, okay, 60 million, and you do your show, and then another person goes 80 million, 
But when you do it, you need to wear a Hitler mustache and fucking salute the air. Yeah, you can throw 20. You can throw 20 mil out the way for integrity. Yeah. But if it's a situation between 100,000 and a million, then you go for the million no matter what. So let's just say that every single network offers me the same exact amount, right? I would say that I would go with one of the major networks. It would be NBC, CBS, or ABC. Mm Mm-hmm. I had to go with one of them and, uh, you know, be their four o'clock guy. But he, it would be so weird being there, you know. I might want to be somewhere where I could have First freedom. First off, I don't trust. I don't trust the morning news. You know why? <laughs> why? Because these motherfuckers are there at six in the morning, fucking ready to go, not a hair out of place. They did their makeup. They're in their suit. I don't trust people that get up early as fuck in the morning and are happy. Well, they have to. Mm. They have to. That's their job. Mm. They have to literally get up and fill in that time slot. Because when everyone else is waking up feeling like a piece of shit, the last thing they want to do is turn on their fucking TV before they go to work and see another person. So what do they not. so what do they do? They, do they wake up at three in the morning? Or do they wake up at four in the morning? They, yeah, they wake up and they get there like hours and hours before. See, or maybe like an hour before. Now, my question is, do you think that that's the end? Like when they get done, they, they go home and sleep? Or do you think that that's their day? Like they wake up and do the show and that's their day? I would personally think, right, that they wake up, they do the show. Because you're the most alert in the morning. Not me, dude. I'm out of it in the morning, dude. Yeah, but you're talking about maybe an hour after you wake up. I'm talking like if you've been up for three hours, once you get into your third hour, you're like, you're go. You're golden. You're moving, right? Right. Uh, when it gets towards the end of the night, you're moving a little slower. Okay. I mean, that's pretty much my patterns. I don't know what your pattern is. My pattern is like six hours into the day, I'm fucking whoop. You know you're what ready I mean? to go. I'm ready All to right. Go. So, but I think yeah, I think they wake up at like you know two a.m. or something like that, and that's that's how early they wake up. I, I'm just not a morning person. I'm just a not, and I, I get I'm I'm like not a happy person in the morning. Like I don't know. Once I discovered coffee, that helped, though. Yeah. Like, uh, a cup of coffee in the morning when I'm like, fuck life, then it's it's better. I really want to know... I mean, I just keep thinking about this plane. The plane? <laughs> it's like... The plane. Dude, because there could be some really, really strange, strange possibilities of what happened to this plane. The plane could have landed. They could be alive somewhere. Right, they could have hijacked it. Have you even looked into this that much? Or no, no, because it's not an interesting story. I'm apologize to all the family members and all the people on the plane that I'm not giving you my interest. I apologize. My interest isn't going to save you, but I apologize for not giving you my interest. I really am. I don't. But wanna, it's not interesting to me. I don't want to give any interest to it, but that's all they're talking but about. So, like, no, I feel you like want to give interest. To, okay, okay. I, I didn't know you're going that route. I did not know you're going that route. What okay. route did you think I was going? A, a different route. <laughs> <laughs> Good ex- a different route I thought you were going to say anything else Sorry <laughs> uh, Yeah they need to start doing news so you on got, stuff So you got guilted into to thinking about it? I mean yeah Because that's all they're talking about I've been trying to turn on the news To get some news about what's going on With Russia right And mm-hmm. what's going on with this new SOPA law Right and I can't get it anywhere. Dude, I have to go to like, you know, these uh, little websites. Do you watch Bill Maher? Uh, I've watched Bill, Bar- Bill Maher in the past. Okay. At the end of every Bill Maher show, he does this thing, which is like a wrap up monologue. And it's always money, dude. It's always money. He was talking about how because of the Internet, because of how, how we consume our news. Right. Right. Newspapers are pretty much going away. The all the major news stations on televisions are so catered to one point of view. And now people are getting their news through Yahoo, through Google, through YouTube, whatever. Right. He basically made a really good point. He was saying this. He goes, we literally have so much news and so much information out there that we can cater to the news that we want to hear about. Right. And the thing is, is like not all news you necessarily necessarily want to hear about. But we've come into this comfort zone where if okay, this plane crash thing. Since I don't, I'm not really big in the news anyway, so I'm a horrible candidate for this. But like, if I was into the news, I could choose not to listen to anything about the plane crash stuff because there's fucking websites and there's news blogs and right. there's all this stuff that can literally cater to me. If all you care about is fucking gaming, there is 
tons of fucking news channels and information and drama alerts and all this kind of stuff that you can get sucked into the gaming community. And that's all your intake is going to be. If all you're into is fucking anything else, anything you want, there's so much fucking information to the point where if there's a news story that you don't want to hear, you don't have to hear it anymore. And he was saying that's bad. Like jellyfish, he was talking about jellyfish, right? He's like, listen, jellyfish, we hate jellyfish and they're going extinct, but literally jellyfish without them, we might, we would be fucked. What? Jellyfish are going extinct? Yeah, like jellyfish are going extinct or some shit like that. Bill Maher was saying that? Yeah. Uh, or some something. I think it was jellyfish. I'm so horrible at stuff like this because I don't know. So remember. what was the metaphor? The, me- the Basically, he was saying that he was talking about uh, our our current generation, people that get the news now, because we handpick our news, we don't get the news because we only get the news that we want. Right. If all you watch is Sports Center, that's all you're going to know about is just fucking sports. Uh, I don't think that that's um, I don't think it's changed that the much. show newsroom literally is all about that the show newsroom is like saying listen we don't want to cover bullshit we want to cover shit that's actually important to educate people but other news stations just fucking want to report on Justin Bieber getting a DUI right I don't care about Justin Bieber getting a DUI but I heard a lot of information about it because the the pop culture references and stuff like that that I that I uh, that I absorb myself in that's all motherfuckers talk about. That's that's the thing. It's it's weird. It's weird. What what is the best? You know what is the best way to know what's going on in the world? And, and to to be honest, is is to watch multiple multiple sources. I mean, literally, it, it's there's so much information out there that every single person is forced to be a journalist. In order to get the to news. decipher the truth, yeah, yeah. So we're we're playing journalist to the journalist. It's that's, like it's that's like, pretty much it. And then that becomes like a telephone game because we're getting everything secondhand. Then, I mean, look at like I said before, look what CNN is doing right now. Everybody, tune in. Twenty four hour coverage of the missing plane. Help us solve the mystery, like, right, right. dude. They literally had a toy plane. I'm not even joking. They have a toy plane, and they're while they're talking about the missing plane, they're like pointing out there could have been a problem in the engine, and they're pointing at the engine. There could have been something wrong in the batteries back here. It's like, oh my god, what the fuck is this? Like, right. where is the news? Right, I know. Like, what, what? But on that note, I think we've uh, hit our quota on time. I think it's a good cast. I think it was a real good cast. Guys, make sure... Can I uh, say something real quick? Sure. I listened to the podcast while I gamed. Did you really? Yes. I had to basically grind out some missions on GTA Five in order to get money because I was getting low on the dough. And I found a mission that gets you a lot you of You listened money. to this podcast? I li- not to this current one, but the, pa- the previous one. Everyone said it was a really good pe- cast. Like, everyone's been telling me that. Yeah. You know what? I, the thing is, guys, I don't think we put out bad casts. Because yeah. we, we, you don't understand, there's, like, since we started this, there's probably been a good 10, 15 casts that we've done oh, yeah. that we've tossed. Yeah, if we do a bad show and we know you're not going to like it, we just throw it in the garbage. Yeah. So. I mean, there are times where we get dull and boring, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. There, there's definitely some slow parts. You but, can't be fucking on all the time, but. But you haven't seen any of those slow, dull parts because right. we threw them away. Yeah. Bam. Bam. Make sure you check out dramaalert.net. Um, if you are on iTunes, leave a review, you know, give us the five stars, say something down there. We love to read that stuff. Um, if you are jonesing and you want us to be on YouTube and you're wondering why the hell you have to list this and listen to this on your phone or whatever you're listening to, uh, sorry, we're working on it. Love you guys. Peace. Peace.